the room got quiet when I walked in. Yeah. I bet a lot well, of we, rooms we, get quiet we, when you walk in, Rob. We were indirectly talking about you, but we had moved on from you to a whole other argument. There I go. Okay, well, uh, You're talking Taylor always... Swift uh, or uh, yes or no? Are you going to her world tour? That's what it's no, she's probably not coming close to Spokane, huh? Maybe Seattle for a few. Probably. No, nothing I care about. To be honest with you, Taylor Swift. Now Cypress Hill. <laughs> Cypress Hill's coming in. If Cypress Hill was opening for Taylor Swift, would you stick around long enough to see what Taylor Swift was all about? Cypress Hill's coming in 420, 420. to Spokane Arena. That's the most predictable possible. There, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> Is it Cypress Hill's a group, right? Bro. bro. Yeah. Who's in Cypress Hill? What are you doing with your 90s ass countries references, but you don't know who Cypress is? <laughs> who's in Cypress Hill? Uh Be Real. Okay. Um like the app Be Real? Be Real, Send Dog. It's, it's Cypress Hill, man. Like are you is insane it, in the membrane. Insane in the membrane. Oh, yeah. um, uh ba ba ba. Eminem used to do stuff with Cypress Hill. Yeah, I believe, I probably. Um, I think he's on insane in the memory. Star, live Rob large, Rob big house. Name him, Rob. Eminem is. It, it, Eminem didn't work with Cypress Hill, didn't they? See, so oh, when, when I was with the Lakers, Hills. <laughs> no, that was um, D twelve. No, I'm D12. thinking D twelve. I'm thinking D twelve. I'm thinking D twelve. But I would play Marshall Mathers in the Lakers weight room at the Staples Center, yeah. and I would play like the, like the hard hardcore image like the old school like say i'm just marshall mathers that stuff gets you going that's the best stuff right there that's the uh, motivational where, stuff where Christian. where does getting to pick the music while playing for the lakers rank in terms of like career accomplishments because that low-key not to downplay like making the nba everything but being the guy in charge of the music for the lakers actually feels like a cool and I no, imagine it's, that's, it's the weight room. It's in the weight room. In the weight room. But that, I, I imagine but like that you were in charge of the mute. Like you got to, is what you're saying is you well, got to. I, I it would imagine everybody on their own headphones and everything, right? Like I imagine that's a job you don't get to keep unless you keep producing good music, right? Like you I'm would be. Rob held that job for quite right, a, quite a right. duration of time. If this is what he's saying, but you're you're saying no, it's not that important. No, I just didn't give a shit. This is how I work. I just would I would just play what I, I felt like I needed you. to play. It's what I needed. To, I don't listen to the new rap. All these lils got me confused. There's too many lils out. How there. about some bigs? Are there maybe there's maybe there's is that there's big like Biggie? Yeah, but like there's so many lils, so many L -L -L -Ls. Yeah, like, it's hard to keep up. Speeds. And um, then what's crazy is they all got tats on their face, so they all I can't. I'm just an old man, guys. I just I don't know. Cypress Hill, one month from today. Oh, pretty much. It's the 21st yeah. of March. Sack and Jack. He's Rob Sack Ram. Jack Ferris. Gonzaga. On the ones and twos on Gonzaga Nation SI uh, YouTube and boys. Let's clap it up. Christian, can I get yes. a clap? Can I get a clap? Rob, can I get a clap, please? Wait, hold on. Let's, I get a clap, let, me, let, me, let me get it. Let me see if I can do something here. Uh, keep, keep talking. Sound effects? I'll, well, I want to see if I, I I've never used the original sound for musicians. I want to see if I can turn that on in a way that then you guys could hear the sound effects. Are we paying musicians? I'm not willing yeah. to. I, there's no licensing fees here. There it is. Can you guys hear the applause? Yes, I can. All right, deal. Then yes, I can. I feel like I'm on applause. We feel been like I'm on Big it. Bang Theory now. We've been saying it all season long. Oop, I lost if it. This. Here we go. You got me. There we go. We've been saying it all season long. If this team makes the second weekend, it is a successful season. I'm prepared to call it a successful season right now. Rob, are you prepared to call it a successful season? Yeah, well, dude. Uh, I knew this I would think, happen. I knew this would happen. I knew this would happen. I know. I am. I'm uh, For these guys, what they have done, I am very proud. And again, this is just a, a, a great accomplishment. Uh, I think we take it for granted the Sweet 16. You for like, sure we do. Absolutely. At, no doubt. We look at FAO or FA, FAO, FAU, and they're just like, like, just so giddy to be there. And we're just like, this is an accomplishment. We're just happy to be at the Sweet 16. It's, it's another year.
FAO Schwartz that the uh, the the toy store the toy that store that Tom Hanks did they go in. under? Didn't they go yeah, under? I, I think they did. It's just they went the way of uh, Jeffrey the giraffe from Toys R Us, which is to the unemployment line. Um. Mm. <laughs> oh oh no! Way. Wait, do we have to pay you extra now, Christian? No, this is just well, just invoice dance. This is Big Bang Theory all over again. <laughs> Um, yeah, unbelievable. Eighth consecutive Sweet 16. I've got more numbers for you guys if you guys want to hear it. Hit me, Rain Man. Okay, so since 2015, when the uh, run of Sweet 16 started, guess who leads Division One basketball in tournament wins? Michigan State. Gonzaga. Uh, Gonzaga, 24. Number two, Villanova with 21. UNC with 21, Duke with 19, Kansas with 20. So we have three more than Nova, three more than North Carolina, five more than Duke, four more than Kansas. The only problem there is no championship. All those teams I mentioned have cut down the banner since 2015 when we started this uh, (laughs) eight years of advancing to the second weekend. We don't have to hark on that right now. We could celebrate making it to the second weekend. We are very much still alive playing a UCLA team. But as I mentioned, as you mentioned, Rob, Grand Canyon was one thing. I, I feel like we were never – I feel like the game was never in jeopardy. TCU is a tough mf and team. Those are tough goddamn frogs out of Fort Worth. And they were coming the for Miles, us. They were not scared. Mike Miles was – made me nervous. Mike, that guy lie. was sick. That guy was sick. And that guy was, Did he not remind you of Pargo the way he yeah, played? The, his attitude was very Pargo-esque, yes. And the way he was talking, very fun. I wanted him on my team. Um, if he hasn't done it 14 times already, Drew Timmy once again established himself as one of the greatest college basketball players ever, full stop. Now, Christian, I'm curious – you, I don't are, think you can. I don't think you can argue. This no, you can't, re- you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. But like watching the game, it's one thing to like catch Timmy highlights and look at the box scores and blah blah blah. But when you watch that game with everything on the line, like potentially his Gonzaga career coming to an end, to have a second half the way he did and just pretty much refuse to lose, did did his stock rise in your mind at all, Christian, or, or was he already pretty high? I mean. There's no limit to which a, a player's stock can rise. So absolutely, it, it went up. You always love big games in big opportunities. And from, it, like, you pick any of the big players that you grew up with in college basketball as being your pantheon. And I feel like ultimately their play or their career is boiled down to usually playoff games that get remembered. So, yes, absolutely was a huge one. Uh, not going to say that that was his legacy, but it was a nice way to cement the sample size uh, of you'll remember him for plenty of big games. Okay. The only other person you could say it was Lou Alcindor, maybe Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And Col- that's the only one I can think. Of. He's won just four straight. Like, I, yeah, I, can't that, think- I mean, that's, that, I think that's another level, but I'm not calling him. I'm not calling him the greatest of all time. I'm not doing that. I, I don't He's know, up like, there for far, college for sure. Oh, 100. And that's what I mean. Like if you if you a grab top, this top, game, he's a, he's a top 20 college basketball player with no argument whatsoever. He's a top 15 with. Uh, uh, okay, you can start debating it. He's a top 10 in some circles. Yes, yeah. I agree, Christian. You could you could put a seven minute highlight reel of Timmy just in the tournament over his career. Like oh, he's had, like, there's not much. They're just up and unders. And like, and well, that's like, what I mean, but it's still no, like, I know. it's, it's up and like unders spectacular. It's, he's just like, like, give like, him a like lunch tail. And a, they're like up and unders. Do the 3000 hits for a batter. And like 90% of them was Rafael Palmero singling to left. You know, I could, we're going to see six boys. Good Lord. <laughs> They're up and unders when the entire stadium knows that he's about to do an up and under and he's still 100%. It's, it's, he's a working man. Uh, you know? 28 and eight. Who, if let's, okay, let's remove Drew Timmy from MVP of Denver weekend. Who is the next up Zag you would give it to? MVP. Julian. Julian or Anton? I would not give it to Julian. And I know people are going to think I'm a hater. 
You you are, but we've been, but you, what you've this hating has gotten him better. I think that second, I, if that's true, then great. I think the second half of TCU. I hate to say it, Rajir Bolton stepped up in a big way that no other guard was a, was certainly Hickman, doing. I need more from Hickman. I, I need, need more from, me. I need you, more from you Hick, saying I you need, need more. more from Hickman is like you saying you need me because right now we're contributing about the same to Gonzaga basketball. I need more from Hickman, big I, time. I need more. You, 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 you before we get I, before we get to Hickman, I want to give uh, Bolton his flowers. I think it was twelve or thirteen points in the second half, and they were big, big points. Big three, big a, a couple of big threes, and I, I honestly don't think. I don't think we're moving on without Rajir in the second round. Obviously, agreed. We're definitely not doing it without without Timmy. Anton was incredible. Game one, Julian was great. Okay, back to Nolan. I need it. Uh, we need. I need more. your top twenty-five overall. I need that on the court. Then, if you're gonna, if you're going, if you're going to be that guy, and we brought you in here to be that guy, I need you to be that guy. And now he's going up against twenty three year olds. Well, was that another drop we should listen for? No, I was I was just following his logic. If we brought you in to be the guy, and you're gonna be the guy, then I need you to be the guy. I'm like, okay, let's be the guy right now. Yeah. When it's not next year. Yeah, Nolan Nolan Hickman is no longer a project that we're right. We're no, we, we we brought you in as an right all American. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree, and I think he needs to step up in a big way or catch more pine. Um. Now he's going Hunter. Up. Hunter is doing his part. You know? I like I Hunter. I think Hunter has been great. I I think Hunter has been tremendous, especially in the last six weeks or so. Like I said, we'd love to see more. Someone who has some, I'll say it, someone someone who's got some dog some nuts on him is Malachi Smith. Yep. Yep. And I just I just, going back. I I'm sorry. We're getting me all hyped up. I just need more. Like the body language on Hickman. I need more. Every, this is. You come to listen to this podcast because you want to hear what you really want to hear. And this Rob, is, I'm so proud of you. What are we I get, to doing this? This is the most, uh, not negative, but constructively critical you've been. Well, through. I just watch his body language and I'm like, yeah, you're not doing enough. Yep. To, to, act, have... to act that way. To act that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. I agree. He doesn't, he hasn't afforded himself the luxury of like drooping his shoulders and like, Throwing his arms around and being like, "What was that call?" Right. Um, I agree, and that and they, we used to get on Anton for that, like the all Correct. shucks body language, moping up and down the court. Um, that doesn't play, especially doesn't play when you're not being a productive basketball player, and you're letting you're playing Matador defense, which isn't going to fly against Tiger Campbell <laughs> Thursday night in Las Vegas. Well, we could talk about Tiger's hair. I'll tell you that. Talk about okay, it. We get it, buddy. We get it, buddy. You, you want to be Bob Marley. You okay? think it's too much. We get you, it. Think, you think it's too much. Dude, you're he's lying to everyone, telling people that he like doesn't care. Like he's lying to everyone. That I know no, so damn I well. I know damn well that's so hot. It's a hundred degrees with that thing on your head. I agree. What I agree. You, what do you want to what's what's your debate? What are you talking to me or Christian? What does that have Christian. to do with his basketball acumen? No, I can no, 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 no. I think Rob, he, Rob's point he's is, a, he if he, is a top three all-time UCLA basketball player. And in, in terms of like, whoa, 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 top three whoa, UCLA whoa. players of all yeah. time. He's on the UCLA. Oh, put Farmar over him. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, Farmar's been in Farmar's been Farmar a two final fours. over that. I wouldn't. Uh, Farmar has yeah. been a two final fours. I mean, Kevin Love, Russell Westbrook. And that's just like in the last 15 years, not to mention the 70s, 80s guys. What are you on, Christian? <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. Like you're saying two Final Fours. He's on route to another one this year. Uh, he is he is producing for those around him. I get it that he's not – like you say Kevin Love and Russell Westbrook, those guys were successful at the NBA level. I'm not saying that Tiger Campbell is projecting out to be any sort of type of NBA town. I'm just saying you, you think Kevin Love wasn't what you you think Kevin Love and Russell and like Westbrook Darren Collison like they weren't like world beater like they they we have not been a blue blood basketball program. I listen the 70s and 80s that group yes 
goats, legends left and right, all actual, like, really good-ass college basketball players. For a while in the 90s and 2000s, we produced guys that would have one or two good years under, like, a Steve Lavin or Ben Allen or whatever, but ultimately became things in the pros and not the college. And I'm saying for what he contributed and did in the college ranks, Tiger Campbell, all-time great. I, I'm going to go – listen, I came on this podcast ready to give UCLA all the respect in the world. You're yeah, making right. me. Right. You're making me want to go the right. other way here. Because right. people, here's what people forget about this UCLA basketball team two years ago. You host a show with what they the Christian best Christian players ever, and you're talking Christian. about Gonzaga versus UCLA in a matchup. You were not about to come on here and be. No, I was. I was. I was. I was. But Such Christian, me, That's, don't lie to your fans, man. People forget this UCLA basketball team, this vaunted UCLA basketball team who is led by a point guard who, according to Christian, is a top three UCLA player of all time, barely got into the tournament two years ago. Barely. Had to go into the play-in game. Made a magical run. I will not I will not hold that against them in Indianapolis. Went on a magical run to the Final Four and barely lost to an undefeated Gonzaga team. Last year, they were pretty good. Made it to the Sweet 16. Lost in what was pretty much a disappointing season, correct? Now this year, oh, everyone God, that's me. still now this year, all of a sudden, still on the team, we're we're putting in the pantheon of greatest UCLA players of all time. This UCLA team has accomplished a lot, not as much as you think. And it's, and if they lose Thursday night, that is a big disappointment. Wouldn't you agree? Well, let's have that podcast after Thursday. Night. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. We'll, see. Uh, well, I just I know they have a bunch of lookalikes. You got Johnny Depp wannabe. You got a, uh, you got Bob Marley wannabe. It's just come on, figure it out over there. And I think I think your Tiger Campbell point, Rob. It wasn't so much that you think it deserves from his basketball. It just annoys you that he doesn't admit. Like, yeah, it's tough sometimes, but I love it. So what are you gonna do? His attitude right. is like, oh yeah, I don't even notice it. Which is- exactly, yeah. exactly. That's a damn lie, and you know yeah. it. The thing no. is hot as hell. <laughs> and you know, garden it. If I had, if, if he put like a screen and that hair got in my face, you know how, oh, I know it stinks. I know it does. Dreads are terrible. I mean, I've out. never had dreads. I don't know, but I can't imagine it'd be super comfortable. It's got to be heavy yeah. too, right? Exactly. Let's just, no, come on, man. All right. Well, let's get back to basketball here. Okay. It looks. Okay. Well, I, I, before we get into the UCLA matchup, I have one detour here. Christian and I were talking about it a little bit. How about Gonzaga in NT2A commercials this year? He's Mo. How, how Mo in the AT&T commercials, and then there's also um, what's his I name? What perfectly scripted acting gig for that man? For Mo? Yeah. I don't. Th- does he speak in it? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he sings. <laughs> he, he sings. sings. Okay, okay, he okay. Opens his. No, 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 no. He I don't think he sings. Know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. There's Mo, and then there's the Stephen Adams commercial. Yeah, but the, the guy Steve. sitting on it. And then there's Chet Holmgren. So it's three yeah. separate commercials. Wait, is the Chet Holmgren one AT and T as well? Yep. Okay. So yeah, AT&T, they're all AT and T. AT and T invested heavy in Gonzaga. And I think it makes sense because, you know, they had to make those decisions. They had to shoot those commercials back in like January, maybe February. And they thought, okay, who's going to be in the tournament and who is going to be there for at least two weekends. So they could have gone any number of directions. They chose Gonzaga. And I like that. I don't know. Some, a lot of you might be rolling your eyes out there, but I think it's cool after 21 years, (laughs) Christian is. Well, then why did they pick no, UCLA, saying, Christian? No, because it's it, it's cool, but it's Gonzaga's the perfect. I think Gonzaga is like like, like a non-threatening brand. No, I was gonna say Gonzaga's like the intro. Whatever you, I don't know what beer you want to specifically say it is, but whatever is like everybody's entry level IPA. Like Gonzaga's the entry level hipster basketball school that you're like, oh yeah, man. Every time the tournament rolls around, I love me some Gonzaga. If you're not, I'm saying if you're not from like the Spokane Pacific Northwest area, and all you do is consume Gonzaga in the month of March, they're a cool team that I don't think rubs anybody necessarily like the wrong way. So, yeah. Oh, see, I disagree. I think we've got uh, more haters than I think you realize. I think oh, we got yeah, a lot of people more. who we're like saying, Duke now, the West coast. I think we got a well, And I think we have a lot of people that think we still don't belong and that we're taking somebody else's spot. They, what? I, I, believe think, that? I think there's still a lot of casual fans. Of, I know, I know, I know, I know it's stupid. And I know if you pay, if you watch more than six basketball games a year, 
but a lot of people who tune in for the tournament aren't watching more than six basketball games a year and they roll they see Gonzaga and the brand recognition is oh this team I can't trust because they're going to lose did you guys see uh, fair or not fair fair or not fair I'm saying that's but that's how it is do you guys see the clip going around social of the uh I don't remember which sports book it was but one of them in Vegas when the last shot went in from TCU and yeah to cover yeah and, it, and you could like you could see like half the room immediately was like fist pumping because they had co- they'd covered it half the, like everyone was ripping up their tickets because of a ball chucked from half court i'm like man gambling is really squeezing every last drop of excitement out of this market. we're in a recession christian shit's I, tight buddy so i could shit's get tight no but i was gonna ask any sports gambling for you guys at all in any of this yeah, you want to talk about this Gonzaga team. I thought it was bad the last couple of years. This Gonzaga team is maybe the worst against the spread. I Seriously, like, you want to talk about Gonzaga against the spread this year? You want to talk about losing your house, Rob? Bet Gonzaga. They're like, I think nope. they're like 14 and 22 against the spread this year, something ridiculous like that. But anyway, that's that was gambling, Jack, who just took over the second Jack takeover. I don't know who the hell that guy is. But no, that one hurt. Christian, and especially because TCU was covering, TCU was up four with 0.7 seconds left. They fouled Hunter Salas for no reason. Hunter Salas, God bless him, made both free throws, and then those assholes rolled the ball down the court, and Gonzaga, Gonzaga players are literally walking around hugging the other TCU players. All a Zag player had to do was tap the ball with his index finger, and all happy Zag fans go home with a winning ticket. But no, they let that guy pick up. And it, people keep saying it was a half court heave. That ball got to with that ball got to the three point line. Okay, that's true. Rob could make that in his sleep. Mm, talk to me. <laughs> um. Anyway, I think it's cool that uh, big brands like AT and T, who are pouring what hundreds of mil into their uh, NT two A tournament campaigns, are teaming up with the Gonzaga brand and they get to meet the AT&T girl. Yes. Uh, Adam. Oh, is, don't roll your eyes, Christian. Christian. Follow don't, her on oh my God. She follow is. Her on Instagram. She is hot. And I won't hear two words about it. They, they, they purposely dress her down in those commercials and make her look like the girl next door. She's, she directs she, them. She, does she? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I mean, how hard, is that to direct? I'm saying that's why she does that. Is like she's has creative. She dresses control. herself down. Yes, she has creative creative control over those all over everything on that on all those ads. Yes, or that has to be just recent. Once she was established as the AT and T person, right? Last she didn't come on and say, last "I want creative control." Years. Oh, okay. She's not flow from progressive. I'll tell you that she doesn't have flow money, but she's on her way. Um, what was I going to say? What was I getting at? Oh, okay. I'm having Adam on. I'm recording with Adam later tonight, and I, I'm wondering if he'll give me a ballpark as to how much he made on that one day shoot. How much do you think it was? I don't think he's going to give you anything close. I to think he. I think he'll give a ballpark. I don't. Adam's pretty fucking upfront about shit. I don't know. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he um, might give us a ballpark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard some. You know, I've heard, but um, just get well, Adam to laugh during this interview, please. I'll try my best. That's all I'm asking. I don't know. It it might it it might be pretty serious, but who knows? Who knows? We'll see. Um, he's got it. Uh, okay. Christian and I were also talking about this, Rob, in our pre-show meeting that ended with us screaming at each other before you came on. Right. Right. (laughs) Christian says if Gonzaga beats UCLA, his beloved alma mater, he will. If Gonzaga does it you know, legitimately and wins by, I don't know, six or eight points and UCLA put up a fair fight. He'll be good with that. I concur. If you flip it around, I totally agree. Like I said, it's a successful season. If we give UCLA a good run and we're just on the wrong side of it, so be it. If this comes down to a couple of bad calls or no call or somebody fouls out and they shouldn't have fouled out, that is going to be impossible to live with for not until next year for a long time. Because I do think after UCLA, the path is pretty favorable for us. I agree. I can. Comp- I I do agree with that. I just I'm so sick of seeing UCLA in the tournament. I like, like 
dude. It's like I'd much rather have Princeton. It's so cliche. I feel like oh, the two West best best West Coast teams have to face off against each other again in the tournament. I don't know, man. I, that's just how I feel. I mean, can we see someone else? Who would you rather see? Can I interject real quick and just say, get at me with Princeton? Um, I called that one a long, like I, I shameless self plug for my other side hustle in the high school sports front. The guy that is their point guard, Ryan Langborg, is a San Diego kid. And is that the one? Is that the one black dude? No, white kid who's a finance okay. intern at, at J.P. Morgan. <laughs> oh, that guy, that guy, that guy who left uh, and came back. Yeah, um, yeah. he. Uh, I have video of him calling it that he's going to the Ivy leagues. And by the time he graduates, he will take an Ivy league team to the sweet 16. Like I have a throwback Thursday on my Instagram of that kid. Um, it's weird when white kids have confidence in basketball. It always- why isn't that? Why is what? That why? why is, what are you why talking is, about? Why isn't that up? Some of the best basketball players are like cocky <laughs> and white. <laughs> not those kinds of, <laughs> what are you talking about? Not, not, not five eleven, 170 pound white kids. Uh, oh, dude! Come on, you got you got white chocolate. Also, there was a kid wait, named white chocolate to, for God's sake. Back to this Tiger Campbell conversation. Yeah, you think Tiger Campbell's a top three UCLA player of all time? I don't know if he's ever been the best player on his UCLA team with Johnny Juzang and then Jaime Hawkes in the last couple of years, right? Out of here with Hawkes. I agree. I agree. But, but I think Hawkes. he's. I I agree. Hawkes. Is a paper tiger for the UCLA Bruins. Like he, that man looks good on on the on the stat page. He's not our best player at any point. Okay, interesting. Because well, a lot of people the would say Pac-12 beg, begs to differ. The, Rob, have you not seen the Pac-12 is so bad at their jobs? The schools are leaving. I don't care what the Pac-12 thinks in terms of the voters <laughs> like that. People are idiots. Yeah, but oh. San Diego State, they yeah, another Colorado one. Colorado and Utah to our divine. We had a perfect little bubble of ten. And they added some. It was the yeah. Pac-10, and it just sounded better. <laughs> Pac-10, it did it, sound it, better. Because, and I have the. Dis- I was there during the transition from ten to twelve, and let me tell you, man, we don't identify with them. You don't. You don't at like the, going to Salt Lake the, City at the, at the family cookout. Like if the Pac-12 was all there hanging out, Utah and Colorado off at a different table. I don't. That's a lot fair. of people said. A lot of people said that though when they brought on Arizona and Arizona State. Like who are you? Who are these yeah, roads? Arizona schools decided to party so hard that we would give them some respect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Um. That's fair. All Gronk, right. Gronk went there. That's all you need to know. Congratulations to the Gonzaga Bulldogs on a successful yeah. season. Look, this is exactly what you. I mean, we could do a compilation of what you guys talked about all year. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. And the team needs to be hot at the right point. And the, and now you're literally saying that. One more Sweet 16 game, we get through that, and this is all winnable because number yeah. one seeds went down left and right. Number seven seeds kept advancing, and like freaking crazy that. Yeah, it's the beauty all of the sport. The different nitpicking this season, you guys had at these different. This guy's having this bad feet. This guy's young and what hasn't you know really stepped up yet. Now here we are. Totally agree. Mm. Could not agree more. Mm. Could not agree more. Great. It's the it's it's what makes the sport. I need I need some sermon. It's what makes like this more music, the best. Like some church music with you. The best and the very worst. If you're on the other side of it, if you're a Purdue fan or an Arizona fan or a Kansas fan. Yeah, exactly right. Um, Purdue is where they belong. Quick, unbelievably quick turnaround for the Zags. Literally the last game of the weekend, Sunday night, and they will be playing Thursday night uh, in Vegas against UCLA. The third time they'll be playing. You, uh, the second time they'll be playing UCLA in the team mobile third time in the last two seasons, they'll be playing there. Have you been to a game there before? Yes. It's awesome. So convenient, dude. Have you? Yes. And I, so I, convenient. I love Vegas embracing its availability as an event city for that kind of stuff. I think it's I was literally, fun. I was literally just reading an article. It's like the NC two way loves Vegas. But it hasn't always been that way, which is crazy oh, to think. Rob, like, remember just six years ago for, uh, for your WCC tournaments and everything. Rob, at the very uh, end of we Rob's did, career was yeah, very end. We right? did San Diego, and then we did Vegas the WCC for the rest of the. I oh, only okay. did one out of Vegas, and then Vegas took over. Well, yeah, I we were the first con- outside of uh, like the Mountain West, which they were doing it forever because you know UNLV would host it. 
But WCC was the first conference that had no affiliation with Vegas to start doing it. And then like six, seven years later, Pac-12 was like, oh, that looks awesome. We're going to start doing that. Yeah, see, six or seven years late, Rob. You guys are idiots. That's true. I agree with you there, Christian. They would do it at the Staples Center, and no one would show up to the Pac-12 games. No one. Like, they'd have yeah. incredible games, and no one was showing up to downtown L.A. at 5 o'clock on a Thursday. Yeah. yeah. First of all, you're driving at that yeah. time to get yeah. to those games. No, thank you. Yeah. No, and it's so you. unfair. Like, if Oregon State has a good team that year, they have to go to L.A. for to watch their team play in the tournament. Wouldn't they, wouldn't they much rather jump on a plane to Vegas and you could just walk around and have fun? I think that's the whole Vegas right. idea. Right, right, right. right. That's the whole right. Vegas idea. WCC. Well, I, well, mark my words. I think Julian's going to have a, a great game because he's back home. Back home. He always Vegas. does. He always, he always plays well in Vegas. He That is true. He played. He had a good WCC tournament. He had a great – people always talk about his great game against Duke last year. I'd love to see it. What a time to have a great uh, great couple of games. Um, Christian, final score prediction against UCLA. Tiger Campbell is 45. Oh. Javier. <laughs> Javier. Uh, Javier. Tiger Campbell will have like eight, but he will have the most important eight. I don't know. I'm awful at final score predictions. I'll say 75-72. Gonzaga? Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go seventy nine, sixty nine zags. Ooh, I see. that's like an it. ass whooping. No, uh, it's no, gonna be a good I, game. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the zags just pulled away way late. And that's it. Um, thank you for listening. We appreciate it. Uh, as I mentioned, probably trying to get up. Uh, continue to get up two pods a week. Uh, for the next, I don't know. And, and unless they lose tomorrow, then I'll be sad for four days before we record again. Oh, um, those are the craziest <laughs> podcasts afterwards. <laughs> those ones. Uh, again, yeah. I One thing to get your ass beat by a Baylor in the national championship. It's another thing to lose because of shitty officiating, which is what happened against Arkansas. But I'm not going to complain about the officiating because that's a loser move. Mm. Uh, Christian, thank you so much. Rob, anything for us? Oh man, just stay happy. It's, hey, it's beautiful, sunny, warm weather over here. Spokane is doing it great over here. Life is great. Okay, it's about to get better. Mm, talk to me. <laughs> <laughs>